they bring color and class to the catwalk, introducing new styles and trends. The chic Diane von Furstenberg, the classic Burberry, respected Louis Vuitton, the legendary and luxurious Hermes, and Donna Karen, an American fashion icon. In the 1970s, she landed on the fashion scene with a simple mantra, feel like a woman, wear a dress. Diane von Furstenberg had arrived. She was touted as the most marketable designer since Coco Chanel and a new icon for liberated women. The creator of the iconic wrap dress became the symbol for a new generation of women. Oh, couture is like uh, the Rolls Royce of fashion. Von Furstenberg rose to fame as a fashion designer and society figure in 1970s New York when her figure-hugging jersey wrap dress became a cult item worn by Fifth Avenue socialites and those part of the Studio 54 crowd. Over the next 30 years, she saw her business soar to become the multi-million dollar fashion empire it is today. She was the 26-year-old bride of Austro-Italian Prince Egan von Furstenberg when she first designed the dress that shaped a generation. She called it the little bourgeois dress that became known the world over as the multifunctional wrap dress. Due to its important influence on women's fashion, the wrap dress is even featured in the collection of the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. You will always see wrap dresses. As long as I make clothes, there will be some wraps, but there's a lot of other things. Her clothes are designed for modern, strong, yet feminine women, and most of her catwalk shows are held at her headquarters in the meatpacking district of Lower Manhattan. On the catwalk, the Belgian-born designer sends down oversized checks on trouser suits, as well as chiffon dresses and miniskirts. Shrunken leather jackets and oversized parkas combine with light, colorful leggings. Bright colors remain a big part of her shows. Knits, chiffon and silk are mainstays on the Diane von Furstenberg runway. Pencil skirts in black and grey are also one of the main looks of her collection that can take working women from day to night. The inspiration for her 2006 winter collection was the 1800s pioneer woman, the 1950s pageant girl and today's career woman. She became internationally acclaimed for her simple and affordable clothing that acknowledged the modern woman as both beautiful and career-minded. Buoyed by her success in fashion, von Furstenberg's name and image became so synonymous with style and strong sales that she signed a number of licensing deals that saw the DVF brand stamped on everything from sheets and towels to curtains and rugs. Along with her work as a fashion designer, von Furstenberg is also president of the Council of Fashion Designers of America, a position she accepted in 2006. Her feminine and elegant gowns are also a favorite with Hollywood actresses such as Katherine Heigl and Kate Hudson, who dazzled in the DVF dress she wore to the premiere of her film, You, Me and Dupree. She created clothes that women not only wanted to wear, but felt good in. Her knowledge of the female shape and the basics of comfort has seen her fashion house and its designs become a staple for women on the go. Today, Diane von Furstenberg's classically chic designs attract both high society and celebrity types, returning her to the pinnacle of the fashion world she first occupied over 30 years ago. Her design philosophy remains the same now as it did when she first began creating clothes to create elegant ease for all women. This iconic designer has created an empire and a legacy that will last long after she is gone from the fashion industry.
British fashion house Burberry is famous for their clean lines, classic styles, such as their signature pieces, the trench coat and the Burberry check, as well as their traditional colours. In the 1850s, Thomas Burberry opened a store and began creating and developing what is now one of the world's oldest and most renowned designer labels. The chic approach to designer fashion has distinguished the Burberry label from many other labels in the industry. The classic ideal of taste and distinction has always been the appeal of Burberry designs. The traditional Burberry check is protected as part of the UK trademark registration and is now used in a wide range of Burberry designs, from the traditional use as a lining for coats to the bag designs. Known as the Royal Fashion House, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles have even granted the company royal warrants. Current design director Christopher Bailey went from the Royal College of Art to spending a year at Donna Karan's studio in New York. After working under Tom Ford at Gucci, he was hired to resuscitate Burberry. Since his arrival at the label, Burberry has earned over $165 million in profits. His designs see models taking to the catwalk in soft pastels and neutral shades. Mini dresses with full skirts, fitted bodices and bell sleeves are a staple of his dishevelled elegance. Sparkling cocktail dresses and the signature trench coats also feature in his collections. Burberry has stores all over the world, but their main headquarters are found at their London store. It offers a wide variety of classic but cutting-edge clothing styles for men and women, as well as the many traditional Burberry accessories such as scarves, bags and perfume. The classic Regency Street store carries classic jackets, blazers and trousers through to purses, wallets and, of course, trench coats. With its history dating back to 1856, Burberry clothes still have the mark of something very British about them. And everything you need is right here in the store. Bailey's latest collections have seen him take Burberry in a new design direction. His recent collections have taken a break from tradition. Not a trench coat or black and white check was to be seen on the catwalk. The neutral palette that has been a cornerstone of the Burberry collection for years was cast aside and the traditional Burberry trench was remodelled with a tougher edge. Fabrics across the collection were harder, buttons bigger and belts thicker. The label is famous with fellow Brits such as models Agnes Dane and Kate Moss, both of whom have walked down the red carpet and the catwalk in Burberry designs. Bailey's menswear collections are just as anticipated as his women's wear catwalks. Typically British, the Burberry man can't part with his cardigan. It embraces Bailey's layering look with a creased scarf often knotted on top. Big Burberry bags are also taken down the catwalk, somewhere for guys to stuff their screwed up clothes before taking them out again, all ready to wear. Trying new styles and designs while still retaining the classic Burberry sensibility, the design house is looking to new avenues to boost their brand and entice new and younger customers. And it seems designer Christopher Bailey is the man to do it. With the classic Burberry name once again firmly entrenched as a fashion must-have, the distinguished company has proven that its signature check will never go out of style. As one of the oldest fashion houses in the world, Louis Vuitton's signature leather goods are considered a status symbol and highly respected around the world. Louis Vuitton, sometimes referred to as LV, is a French luxury fashion and leather goods brand and is one of the main departments of LVMH, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy headquarters in Paris. 
Known mainly for bags and large traveling chests, Louis Vuitton is internationally renowned and highly regarded in the fashion world, and as a result has also become one of the most imitated luxury brands. Having begun in 1854 with founder Louis Vuitton, the company grew thanks to his involvement with the French upper class. Vuitton was able to gain expert knowledge and put this to good use, creating well-made travel cases. He began designing his own luggage, which saw him establish the LV company. By 1885, the company had its first store on Oxford Street in London. After the death of Louis Vuitton in 1893, Georges Vuitton, his son, took over and introduced the luxury brand to the world. He also presented the monogram canvas with quatrefoils and flowers. By this stage, stores were opening all across the world. By the 1950s, Louis Vuitton had begun designing purses, bags and wallets and was gaining the attention from some of the world's most beautiful people, such as Audrey Hepburn and Catherine Hepburn, whose selection of Louis Vuitton suitcases and trunks sold for over $40,000 at a Sotheby's auction in New York. The 80s saw the creation of LVMH, where Moet et Chandon and Hennessy, superior manufacturers of champagne and brandy, joined forces with Louis Vuitton and formed the luxury goods empire, headed by French businessman Bernard Arnault. Two years after the merger, Louis Vuitton was operating out of 130 stores worldwide. Avant-garde American designer Marc Jacobs joined the luggage retailer in 1997 as artistic director. It wasn't long after joining that he created the company's first ready-to-wear clothing line for men and women. Known as the creator of grunge, Jacobs' partnership with classic couture Vuitton seemed an unlikely one. However, to this day, he remains their creative director, overseeing all the label's collections. Jacobs has been successful in revamping Louis Vuitton and has collaborated with stylists and artists to create some of the most popular designs and accessories and clothing, which have also become a favorite for the rich and famous. One such person was actress Sienna Miller, who braved the cold weather to don a glamorous white Louis Vuitton dress for the premiere of her film Casanova. With stores all across the world, including what many consider the fashion capital of the world, Paris, Louis Vuitton celebrated its 150th anniversary in 2004. In that same year, more stores were opened around the world, including Johannesburg and New York, located on famous Fifth Avenue. The following year, the French luxury goods maker opened a Beijing flagship store, expressing confidence in its ability to attract China's growing market of affluent consumers, despite rampant piracy of its shoes, luggage and other products. This store was the 12th opened by Louis Vuitton in China since 1992. Louis Vuitton now manufactures and sells luxury leather goods, as well as fashion accessories, ready-to-wear clothing and jewelry, with many of the items featuring the trademark brown damia and monogram canvas fabrics, which has been used since the beginning of the brand. All of the products also feature the famous LV initials. So with everything from suitcases to handbags and purses, watches and men's and women's clothing, Louis Vuitton over the years has come to acquire the brand and image that is loved today. Legendary French goods house Hermès began as a saddle maker in Paris in the 1800s and now specializes in leather and ready to wear. The company is renowned in the fashion world and its products are considered to be prestigious by virtue of workmanship, reputation and high price. Established in 1837, the saddle shop of Terry Hermès in Paris quickly became an international success. The look of Hermès was simple, the height of luxury with a nod to the house's equestrian heritage. By the 1920s, Hermès introduced the first ladies' bag with zip closures. Gradually, the company expanded into riding gloves, belts and designed the now-famous travel trunks to meet the needs of the new automobile drivers. 
The infamous Kelly bag debuted in 1956 after Grace Kelly, Princess of Monaco, used the classic Hermes crocodile handbag to hide her pregnancy from the paparazzi. At a price of roughly ten dollars to $60,000, as well as a minimum three-year wait list, it is an accessory that most women can only aspire to attain. Actress Jane Birkin began carrying a leather Hermes number in 1984 and started the rage that is the Birkin bag. Today, the Birkin remains to have the longest waiting list of any luxury accessory, about six years. In the 1970s, the first women's shoe collection and the first complete men's ready-to-wear collection were introduced. Catwalks in the early 90s showed classic designs in bold colors. The French fashion house teamed bright, tartan tapered trousers with excitingly colored jackets. Vibrant duffel coats and quilted coat warmers printed on one side and plain on the other completed the look. A fifth-generation member of the Hermes family, designer Jean-Louis Dumas Hermes took his collections to the catwalk. His designs revealed a determined elegance, with models turned out in leather jackets with matching slim pants or long skirts with Hermes accessories. Evening wear was brightened with an array of ball gowns. Jean-Louis was also on hand at the extravagant opening of the Fashion House's first flagship store in Rome, with acrobats and dancers taking to the streets to celebrate the unveiling. Hermes menswear designer Veronique Nikanian unveiled a 1999 spring-summer collection that appeared natural and simple with no excess. Shirts were crisp and white, while evening suits and jackets were sharp navy and black. A large array of casual wear was featured in beiges, greys and browns. In 2003, French designer Jean-Paul Gaultier joined the house as the women's ready-to-wear designer and debuted his first collection in 2004. He took his inspiration for color from the skins of horses and evening dresses in rich shades were inspired by the traditional Hermes scarf. It was a very, I think, at times unexpected marriage, but I think that Jean-Paul Gaultier galloped away with the first prize. I think without a doubt he has found a true home and I think that the collection he showed for Hermes today was probably one of the best collections he's ever done in his entire career. The fashion house is a favorite with celebrities as well. Angelina Jolie was seen at the 2008 SAG Awards wearing a strapless vintage Hermes gown, inspiring many women to adopt the strapless look on the red carpet. Hermes continues to be one of the most luxurious fashion houses in the business. Having created some of the most practical clothing to come out of the 80s, Donna Karan has become one of the most recognizable names in American fashion. Not only is she a fashion designer, she's also the creator of the clothing label DKNY, Donna Karan, New York. Growing up in a family who was already involved in modeling and fashion, Karen became obsessed with fashion from a young age and eventually went on to attend Parsons School of Design. After two years, she left there to work for American fashion designer Anne Klein, eventually to be made head of the Anne Klein design team, where she remained for 10 years. It was around this time in the mid-1980s that Karen, with the support of her late husband, founded her own label Donna Cara New York. Her first collection brought with it a new style and combined elements of tailoring with sportswear, making the clothes easy to wear and comfortable. She revolutionized the working woman's wardrobe by creating her famous seven easy pieces, which showed that women could be comfortable, professional, and feminine. By the late 80s, she had introduced the cheaper DKNY label, catering to a wider audience. 
She also closed the New York Fashion Week in front of a star-studded crowd. She was no nan for her power dressing designs, but had softened the shape of her suits for the 1990s. The silhouette was long, linear, and flowing with smaller shoulders. The jackets had the feel of cardigan sweaters, and blouses had a romantic touch of ruffle. In 1996, she classed her work as distinctive American, and for her exclusive autumn fashion line for her DK New York label, called the Neo Classic, her clothing groups featured tailored dresses, bootleg pants, knit shirts, crushed velvet coats, and dresses of chenille and chiffon. With models wearing almost no makeup and dressed in clothes made of felt, fleece and chiffon, her collections have also combined real life with real desire. To me, when I think of American clothes, I think of a reality base, something that is a desirable. And what I was hoping today is that the people sitting in the audience would say, I want to wear it. That looks new, that looks exciting, I don't have it, I want it. And it works for me and they're separates. They're easy, they're uncomplicated. You don't have to think about it. They're just beautiful clothes. Today, Karen's company also produces menswear, jeans, accessories, hosiery, fragrance, and cosmetics. During her career, Karen has been honored for her achievements, receiving numerous awards. In 1993, she was awarded with the Council of Fashion Designers of America Award for Best Menswear Designer. She also received their Lifetime Achievement Award in 2004, the same year her company celebrated 20 years. As one of the more successful designers in America, Karen is in high demand, not just with everyday customers and fellow designers, but also with some of the biggest names in the film and television industries. Young starlet Lindsay Lohan has been seen dressed in a full-length glimmering beige gown designed by Donna Karan, and according to her stylist Rachel Zoe, Lohan was going for a shipwrecked look. Actress Mary Steenburgen is also a fan of Donna Karan designs, as is one of Hollywood's rising stars Rachel McAdams, attending her film premiere in a lovely cream-colored Donna Karan dress. Her use of fabrics from leathers, gossamer silks and soft cashmeres shows her understanding of comfort mixed with pleasure. Donna Karan's style is modern and smooth and continuously provides a feeling of elegance.